Hello everybody, today I'm going to be creating the Wireworld Cellular Automaton. So first of all, Wireworld is actually a little bit different from our usual cellular automatons in the way that it sort of allows you to create your own electronic circuits, to the point where some people have even created fully-fledged computers using it. But how exactly does Wireworld actually work? Well, let's get into the rules of this. So as per usual, the world is made out of a grid of cells, and in Wireworld there's actually four different cell types. And these cell types are empty cells, conductor cells, electron heads, and electron tails. So the conductor cells sort of act as a path for the electron heads to follow. When exactly one or two of the conductor's neighbours is an electron head, it too becomes an electron. And then the electron heads turn into a electron tail, and then the electron tails turn back into a conductor. And with all these rules working together, it causes the electron heads to follow the path of the conductor. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and create this. Usually when I've been creating cellular automatons, the first step was to just fill the world with random cell types relevant to that particular one. However, as it has already been said, my world is a little bit different. So rather than doing a random start, I'm going to allow the user to place down the conductors and electron heads themselves before actually beginning the simulation. Now usually this wouldn't be too bad as I could simply change the cells depending on where the user clicks in the window. But the way my framework for creating cellular automatons works, it also allows the user to zoom the camera in and out and also pan it around. And this causes issues when converting the screen coordinates, as in where the window is clicked, back into world coordinates. This can be seen here. When I'm clicking the mouse, it's placing the cells perfectly fine, they're being placed exactly where I'm clicking the mouse. But the second I pan the camera to the left and try clicking to edit the cells, you can see they're being placed in completely the wrong location. Luckily, there is a function built directly into SFML that is exactly for this purpose. SF render target map pixel to coords, which does literally what I need. Convert the screen space coordinates where the user has clicked the mouse back into world coordinates. So using this function and dividing the final coordinates by the size of a cell, I was then able to find the exact location and cell the user had clicked. So now when I move or zoom the camera around the world, the mouse input still works perfectly fine thanks to the coordinate conversions. Placing individual conductors and electron heads is fine if you want to be very precise in your editing, but if you want to build a large circuit, then placing them individually would start to become a bit of a pain. So I decided to implement a second option, placing lines of cells, as in you would click and drag a line and then it would create conductors along it when you release the mouse button. To do this I started off by storing the location where the user clicks the mouse initially, in other words where the line should begin. And then, during each frame of the application, I would then update another stored value, the location of where the mouse is now, in other words, where the line should end. On top of this, I also stored each location in between these two coordinates in a standard vector. This is so I could sort of render a ghost line where the user is drawing the line so they could see where their line would be created. The code for this ended up being a bit of a mess because it was mostly split up between a ton of booleans and if statements between the line editing as well as the precision singular cell editing but this can be cleaned up later. And this is what the line input looks like. As you can see, I can click and drag the mouse and it will place a line of conductor cells between the two points. As I had already mentioned though, the code was pretty awful. So before actually implementing the rules of the Wireworld Taylor Automaton, I thought it was probably a good idea to actually clean up the program code first. So to do this, I took the two input modes, lines and points, and then moved them both to their own class. Both these classes would inherit from an interface like base class, which would allow the two input modes to override functions such as on mouse press and on mouse release. This would allow the two classes to be used polymorphically by the main Wireworld class. And thanks to this, the two input modes are now completely separate from each other, and so the code is now quite a bit cleaner. After cleaning up the code for a little bit, the final feature to implement would be the actual Wireworld cellular automaton rules themselves. To do this, I simply loop through every single cell and then do the appropriate rule based on what that cell actually is. For example, when the loop reaches a conductor cell, I loop through each of its neighbours and then count all the electron heads, and if there's exactly one or two electron heads surrounding it, then I turn that conductor cell into an electron head. And here is the final result. I'm able to place lines and an electron head and have the Wireworld cellular automaton be simulated. So finally, I'd like to just say thank you to my Patreon supporters, so thank you Kyo Crazyman, Timothy Givens, 
Alan Fernandez, Alchemic, Lucas Durenberger, Neil Blakely Miller, and Nate Brown. Thank you. So, anyways, as always, the source code as well as a download of the program itself will be in the description below. So, anyways, once again, thank you for watching and goodbye.